Uh, welcome to part 5 of our video presentation on chapter 10 that deals with project communications management. In this part we'll talk about various communication tools and technologies and what are some of the best practices when it comes to using them. Uh, nowadays uh, we have a lot of uh, digital uh, web 2.0 tools for communication that includes you know, email, instant messaging, um, you know, uh, social, uh, social networking sites. Uh, but ma make sure, like before you use them, make sure they're appropriate medium for communication. So, for example, if it's a highly secure information, something that is intended only for a limited number of people, then maybe it's not a good idea to share it using emails or Facebook because those things can be hacked and sometimes information leaks from email exchanges or from social media sites, social networking sites in a way that you cannot even predict. Uh, be sure to send information to the right people. Don't just CC everybody. Uh, when you send emails, use meaningful subject lines. You know, it makes it easy for people to understand who you are, what you want from them. It also makes it easier to search through email or archive, ar archives. Uh, be as clear and concise as possible. People don't have time to read emails that are like novels, War and Peace by Leo Tolstoy. Uh, be sure to authorize the right people to share and edit your collaborative documents. So access rights is very important for a lot of those tools. Uh, you know, I actually, the tools that I mentioned before, they're, lo they're not like Web 2.0, they're like traditional tools, unless we're adding, we're adding social networking sites. But nowadays, there are like more advanced tools, you know, th these tools are really Web 2.0 tools. For example, SharePoint portal from Microsoft. It's really like a portal, it kind of looks like a website where people upload documents, uh, update documents, share documents, uh, where they can... Uh, uh, you know, set uh, access rights for individual users. A lot of organizations, they uh, automate their communication workflow using SharePoint, including my former university. Everything that we did was through SharePoint. It was like something that was really over and beyond our ERP system, but it was really our true enterprise system. All kinds of collaboration, all kinds of accreditation reports were shared through SharePoint. Google Docs, you've probably used it, you know, a very powerful tool. What I like about Google Docs is that you can see people's progress, so if somebody says, oh, yeah, I'm working on it, you can really log in and see whether this person is really working or not. If, if no changes are being done to a particular Google Doc, then you know this person is not working. Uh, some companies use wikis. Uh, for example, my former university created a wiki on best practices in teaching. That was a very broad document that included all kinds of uh, ideas, tools, and information about improving teaching effectiveness. But here you see uh, an example by a, a commercial company, Alaska Airlines. Uh, they use secure project wikis to facilitate project communications and collaboration and benefits of that project include uh, benefits of implementing wikis included better documentation you know people collaboratively create documents using this wikimedia engine improve trust and information sharing and also sustain growth uh, now the alaska airlines it department even created the mother of all wikis it's like an index document that uh, outlines the content of all other wikis and their relationships uh, templates are very important. You know, many technical people, they're afraid to ask for help. Uh, overall, you know, not everybody's a creator. I mean, not everybody is comfortable with a blank page where you need to create something from scratch. I think a lot of people, they would rather follow somebody's example than to create their own original approach to something because it's very risky, it's nerve-wracking, and I understand that. So to help those people get started, you know, they can you, you as an organization you can develop the, your own template. Uh, and, you know, research shows that companies that excel in project management make effective use of templates. So for example, you can say if you want to pitch a project, if you want to describe your project and, you know, uh, have your project discussed uh, during a, a particular committee meeting, then use this template to describe what your project is about. Include main objectives, scope, assumptions, cost, and schedule in the form of a gun chart, something like that. So here we have a template for a monthly progress report. You can uh, pause for a minute and look at some of the parts that you may include there. So here we have our, our final project uh, documentation items. You know something, um, you know something that is delivered, uh, you know, at the end of a particular project. Here we have lessons learned report. Uh, you know, um, lessons learned report is something that is skipped by many organizations. You can uh, lessons learned report means like uh, as a result of completing a particular project, what did you learn? What are the things that went well? What are the things that need to be improved next time? So a lot of organizations they skip that. You know, as soon as they're done with the project, they're done. They never go back. But again, if you don't go back, then you will never learn anything. And if you don't learn anything as an organization, as a team, then you will never improve. So you can uh, force uh, teams, you can force your employees to submit lessons learned report by creating a template and saying, look, it's required at the end of the project. 
You can also develop project archives, you know, there's like a comprehensive set of all documentation, well-organized documentation in relation to projects. I know consulting companies, they're very big on that. So whenever they have a new project in front of them, uh, the first thing they do, they try to search whether the comp their company did a similar project in the past. Because if they did something similar, then they can resurrect like all those archives and they can look at their lessons learned reports uh, to make sure they save a lot of time and they do not make costly mistakes that they did in the past. So project archives are very important. Some companies create project websites where all the information is stored on the web so that it can ease access. But most likely it's not going to be like a public website. It's going to be more of a, you know internal website where only authorized users can, can log in and, and look at project documentation. But that can be quite helpful in distributing project-related information. So this concludes part 5 of our video presentation on chapter 10. Thank you for listening.